So I am going to uh, cut this here. Uh, in the next video, we'll uh, tweak out the tips and put a grip on there and, and finish sand and take care of the backing uh, to take it down from its stubbly look uh, to something real, uh, real smooth and clean. You know, when we put a finish on this bow, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Okay, guys, um, I have thinned out the tips of uh, this bow, and so tapered, tapered down the extreme tips of them, and then also thinned them, or narrowed them, really. I don't, don't thin them from, from belly to back, but we want to thin them on the sides because you, you take the most uh, mass for the least amount of impact on the, on the tiller. And I, I try on my bows to get them to about the gauge of my pinky at the minimum. And on a, on a really thick bow like this, uh, pinky size tips is a pretty good uh, accomplishment. But at this point, what we're, we're going to turn our sights to is smoothing this rawhide back. And mostly it's just getting the, the real kind of scratchy stuff uh, that's associated with the rawhide removed. And so, Really, are just going to take a, a scraper like we were working the belly, and we're just going to work this back, kind of like cleaning off the rind of a bamboo backing. We're just going to clean off the uh, dimples of the rawhide. Right, so, nice long stroke here in the end. And this is really just to kind of knock it down. Once you uh, once you get a semi-smooth surface, and you're never going to get anything glass-like because this is, in fact, you know, hide. So it's going to get kind of a a uh, leathery feel to it, uh, which makes perfect sense. And once we get to that stage, and it's got a pretty even, uh, evenly distributed sort of leathery feel to it. We can take some sandpaper and <clears throat> we'll just sand it down just to make sure that we've gotten all of the, the highs and lows worked out and sand it along with the remainder of the bow. And what we're trying to do is really just get down to a smooth, a smooth surface with no wrap marks from whatever it is that we did wrap it with. So sometimes if we're wrapping with cord, we can get, uh, you know what looks like lace marks across our rawhide. Uh, sometimes if you wrap the, even wrap the, uh, an ace bandage or the gauze or whatever else you use, sometimes you'll imprint that leather, or not the leather, but the rawhide on the back of the bow. And so we wanna just kinda of take those marks out. We will smooth everything down really well. Uh, when we go to put the uh, finish on here, it'll take it to a really a really nice uh, glossy finish. Uh, one that we'll actually have to, to deaden down a little bit, maybe uh, rub it with some uh, pumice and oil just to kind of give a satiny finish to it, but it'll give a nice a nice finish to this, to this rawhide. So I'm gonna go ahead and take down the, the, uh, the rawhide backing here. Uh, I have shaved off that little overlap right here at the grip, if you can see. So nice, what would appear to be a good skive joint there. I was unable to do anything about this far, the underside. So kind of softened the bump on the, on the top side. Here is our, uh, our bow at the, the grip section of uh, our long bow here. And a piece of cork. So my like the idea of doing a cork on a traditional bow. I mean, this is something that they, they did, you know, in early America, not so much in, with uh, the English and their, their long bows, but this was something more of a, you know, an American type standard in the, uh, I, I couldn't place it timeline wise, but just early on in, in the days of probably mass production bow making. So uh, I am going to treat this a lot like leather in the in the sense that we're going to soak it in water to help get the uh, pliability going you can tell here that this uh it's pretty brittle if you try to bend it too far 
I'm going to wrap the center section here with uh, some cellophane or some saran wrap and then and then basically wet mold the cork to the grip and we don't want again any water staining on the raw wood here and we also don't want to reconstitute the raw hide that's on the belly side here hopefully you'll be able to uh, see what is going on here with this I have taken this out from the water and it's still I'm not sure that this is going to be supple enough it is it is easier to bend right now uh, but I will tell you and, and it has been soaking for quite some time but I'm not so sure that this is going to uh, handle these these pretty sharp edges right here as a matter of fact I can I can tell just by trying to bend this I can see cracks occurring in the I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just run with it I'm gonna wrap it with uh, some more of the gauze bandage that I had wrapped the the rawhide with just to see if I can uh, just to see if I can make it happen. I mean, I can see it splitting. I don't know if you can pick up on that. So it's having a hard time making that edge. But I'm going to go ahead and just put this around anyway and see if maybe having that reinforcement wrap. won't help it seems to me that I oh here we go let's say I think I misplaced my my bindings so what I think I'm gonna do is kind of wrap it pretty loosely just to get it in place here and then come back and massage this a bit to where I know it's tight and then come back around and wrap it much tighter and I'm a little suspect of how tight this wrap is finishing out and it's here we go so I'm going to go ahead and put on a second layer just to ensure that we're really good and tight here. And from this point, we'll just uh, cross our fingers and hope that we're good. I'll just wrap a, put a little piece of blue tape on there hold everything tight and actually it's probably just going to hold itself right here so here uh, here she is all finished up um, you can really tell it's getting to be late in the late in the year the sun is staying real low in the sky here so I've got a lot of sun coming in the, the garage but nevertheless finished product here I bought or got a cork grip on there it's a little concerned that it might be tough to to wrap these corners but uh, it made it and really feels pretty nice in the hand it's pretty cool uh just got it kind of shaved down and smoothed out uh impregnated it with paraffin wax uh i checked into um uh, Going ahead and finishing with tongue oil, kind of like I did the remainder of the bow, so it's it's all done up in tongue oil. Uh, but it just drank up the tongue oil uh, in the the samples that I, I had done here, so no tongue oil. Uh, checked on beeswax. Beeswax leaves a little bit of a sticky sticky finish to it. Uh, paraffin, on the uh, other hand, it dries up nice and 
uh, tack free, uh, soaks right into the cork really well, uh, gives a nice, nice finish to it. So uh, we're not going to get water penetration in there or even uh, palm sweat causing any problems with our grip there. Did finish out 28 inch draw, 38 pounds. So here, here she is strung up. Just a real, real pretty bow, you guys. I, I think that cedar um, really does look beautiful when it's finished. It, it just really, really pops. Left just enough heartwood here to give it that back and belly um, contrast. Got the uh, rawhide backing here. You can kind of see that in the sun. Uh, but this, she's real pretty. And I had to go to the, the second string uh, split that we took from that log. It, it really did kind of constrain me to uh, a lighter weight bow, unfortunately. Although I could have picked up a little more weight had I left it just a tad thicker. So I, I could have done some things uh, that would have helped me along the way, but truthfully, it's, it is approaching about as thick as it is wide. So this is a uh, pretty interesting dimension to bow. Uh, I want to say it finished out at about an inch and an eighth wide. Uh, we're, we're about an inch and an eighth at the grip. Mid limb is like five eighths of an inch and runs down to not much less than that. It's it's over half an inch deep at the at the knocks. So I'll try and get a little bit of footage shooting it. I'm I'm trying to put together a couple bows that are or arrows rather that are uh, very limber that'll shoot out of a 30 pound bow somewhat straight and try and keep them under uh, you know that 350 grain mark. So we're getting. Uh, a good 10 grain per pound performance out of this. See what we get. Just taking a few shots with the uh, Cedar longbow here. Uh, outfitted it and made two quick arrows that are uh, about 350 grains each, shooting blunt tips out of there. So, backstop back here behind my target should stop them, and I got a can hanging down there. Don't count on me hitting the can, just there for something to shoot at. But as far as speed on this guy for shooting 10 pound or 10 grains maybe more like 11 grains per pound weight is doing pretty well so I'll keep taking a few shots here see if maybe I can't hit that can one and even the blunt tip just went right through the can that's pretty cool now at great risk to that arrow i'm going to take another shot oh right there all right guys well yeah that's uh there's the bow i uh really enjoyed the uh build i hope that uh some of you will take the opportunity to uh, join me in that build, even though it ended up pretty light with the proper, uh, properly matched arrows, it's a pretty well performing tool. So guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, I will see you guys with the next build.